Welcome to Culture Coach Live. We've got uh, Mark Edwards and Gerard Murphy. How are you, gentlemen? How are we going? Morning, Rizzy. Morning, Mark. Morning, <laughs> Jez. Morning, Rizzy. Great to be here again. I've got a bit of a cold, Rizzy. So excuse all viewers. That's excuse right. me if I'm a, bit, a little bit husky. Nah, it's all right, mate. No problems at all. Um, Good weekend of footy. Did your team win? Suns. The Suns were amazing again. Two Suns were two. good. Yeah, which is great. Which is it's not not so much the fact we won two games, but it's wins help, as you know, Rizzy. It's more about the the way we're going about it. So actually, we should do like a little culture couch footy session one week. You know, just yeah, you know, I'm sure the people out there would love to hear our thoughts on Collingwood zero and two, Brisbane Lions zero and two. So maybe we can do a, a separate footy segment, Mark. One one. Hey? We're just talking about. Them. Sorry, Jess. No, I was going to say Carlton 2 and 0, but could easily be 0 and 2. Yeah, win the close ones. That's always a barometer at the end of the year, though, winning the close ones, obviously. Um, I think Geelong, did Geelong win the flag one year, Murph, when they'd won like six or seven or eight really close games? They might have won a couple early and then gained some momentum. Yeah, um, momentum. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, well, that's, that's another topic. We better get on topic. Um, how to be a vulnerable leader. The reason I bring this up, because it's it's an interesting word, vulnerability, isn't it? And it comes up a lot. And in isolation, it can be a little bit scary. What, what does it actually mean? I guess for me, and, and I'll ask you two guys what, what you think of that particular word. But for me, if I talk about being a vulnerable leader, I, I think for me it's more authentic. You know, just be who you are rather than – because sometimes we, we attach – you know, an emotion to a word that's not absolutely accurate. Now, you know, I'm not a wordsmith, but what I'm saying is for me, if I if I think about a really vulnerable leader, it is more around they're showing up as themselves. Yeah, you know, so I know that that's who they are. When they're up, they're up. When they're down, they're down, you know, and, and it's because of who they are. So I can help them when they're down. I can maybe calm them down a little bit when they're too high sort of thing. So I guess, Mark, for me, that's what a vulnerable leader is to me, but what, what does that mean for you? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And I think I'll take it a step further, Rizzi, into showing up as who you are is, is 100% vulnerability. But I think it, that step further is the showing empathy. And to show empathy, you have to take the time to understand other people's perspectives. And without having vulnerability, there is no chance that you can truly show empathy. Yeah. You have to take the time, you have to ask questions. And you have to sit there and understand that, hey, my world is different to the person on the other side. But unless you're vulnerable, you're never going to get to that stage of actually understanding where they're sitting and then, again, being able to show empathy. That's probably my my definition, if you like. But the other part, what I would be, uh, sorry, I would say was um, asking for help. And that's probably been my biggest learning across my leadership journey. I, I always looked at asking for help as a weakness and vulnerability, therefore, was a weakness for me. You know, you had to be the hardest working, first to work, last to leave, the guy who knew all the answers. It's so not true as a leader. You have to be able to ask for help and you have to be able to show vulnerability to do that. Yeah, I reckon there's some good practical tips there, Matt. But you and I have sort of come from the same era, haven't we? Where vulnerability, I know it's an interesting word. You know, we, we were, yes, particularly my coaches were real hard, you know, Parco and, and Wolsey, but I still think they were pretty authentic. Um, but it is an interesting word for, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of 60, so people of our generation. So, <laughs> You know, and you're you're a bit of a hard taskmaster yourself, you know, in terms of that. But so when I ask you, what what does it mean for you, vulnerability? Uh, I think, you know, when Brené Brown does a quick quiz at the end of uh, her podcast, really, she asks six, six quick fire questions or something. And the first one's always, what is vulnerability? <clears throat> for me, it's, um, yeah, the capacity to ask for help. Yeah. So can, are you okay? Can you ask for help or admit that you don't know? I think that's, for me, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I find vulner vulnerability difficult, as my wife yep. would tell you, um, because <laughs> I think I think <clears throat> we grew up we grew up being taught not to be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, if you're vulnerable, it was it was a sign of weakness. Yeah. So I think um, being able to demonstrate vulnerability and being able to ask for help when you need it is is probably quite a difficult thing for some people uh, of our era and um, definitely is for me. But as I think having kids helps that, 
Yeah. So I know, yeah. you know, I often talk about um, my daughter being my best educator, and um, so she's what 21, 22? Yeah. And so she's she's been super powerful for me in helping me understand what vulnerability is, and you know, as I said, my, my wife gives me constant feedback. So for me, it's around <clears throat> it's around um, just being able to ask for help and 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 admit that you don't know. And then as a result of that, that, that builds trust. Like I think that's one of Brené Brown's yeah. um, key findings is that it's sort of counterintuitive, but if you ask people for help, it actually builds trust. Yeah, no, I think the other thing that you just touched on before is leaders don't have to know everything. I think that's the that's almost like the turning point to understand what vulnerability is because you're right. It's sort of like that stoic leader that puts a mask on, goes to work on a Monday because he thinks or she thinks that, well, I have to know everything. I've yeah. got to be strong. You know, yeah. I can't show anything weakness under fire. So that's that's not the case. I think that's a really good starting point for vulnerabilities. Just understand there's no we work with so many different companies and so many different you know, CEOs and and heads of marketing or whatever it is. And the message we give all the time, Mark, is you don't have to know everything. And I almost feel like that's the starting point for being vulnerable. And if you can explain to people, I'm here, I'm I'm Paul Ruse, I'm the coach, but guys, I, I don't know everything. I think that's a really good starting point for some really good conversations around what it is. Yeah, I think if you start workplace, we do a lot of workshops with with some you know, amazing clients, and I think one of the biggest things that comes out of that is collaboration. People have got this yeah. idea around a perfect workplace is something that or someone that collaborates with with everyone else, but they don't really understand what collaboration is. And the beauty about what we do at PVD is we'll drill down into actual behaviours and go, what does collaboration look like? And that's sharing information, that's asking questions. Um, you know, but until you actually be vulnerable, and to your point, Rosie, understand that you don't know everything. Even if you think you do, you really don't. But if you don't know everything, then that's why we collaborate. We collaborate because we have a team of people that are very good at what they do and we have a different range of skill sets. And together as a team, whether it be a footy team or a corporate team, together we are better and that's how we win. And that's true yeah. collaboration. But until you genuinely sit down and go, I don't know everything and I'm willing to find out what other people know and share, then you can't and you've got to be vulnerable to do that. Can we be too vulnerable, Murph? Like, I think. Oh, I think yeah. you know, you're the wrong way, mate. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you no, asked, Murph. Is And I want you to break it down into like <laughs> behaviour. Like Mark's articulated, and we all have. So behaviour is asking questions. A behaviour is standing up and saying, "I don't know the answer." But equally, I think we've got to be a little bit careful. We we don't walk past standards. Because that's what our culture is, isn't it? And is there the potential, if I'm too vulnerable or I'm too empathetic, or I continually tell people I know I don't know the answer, is that dangerous as well for our culture? Yeah, hundred percent is. So that yeah, it's a fine line we walk, isn't it? And anything your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness. But if you if you go back to the trust models around, can you do the job and and yeah. Do you do what's best for the team? If if that's the Stephen uh, Covey model of trust, yeah. and so if can you do your job? So if you keep saying asking for help because you don't know, well you're in big trouble. Yeah. So you don't yeah. you don't have to know everything, and you need to be able to ask for help when you don't. But you do need to know some things, and you don't have to be the best, but you need to be one yeah. of the best if you're the leader. Um, yeah. And I think there's also a piece of oversharing. I don't, you know, I get yeah right. You know, bit tired of people oversharing sometimes and so i think that i think we can confuse we can confuse vulnerability with you know oversharing and i think that's um that that can be <clears throat> that can be misconstrued and as a result i don't think that helps team either but yeah no the answer i think the answer is yes um so just be just being conscious of that and a lot of that too comes back to preparation, Mark, doesn't it? I mean, no one we want to we want to be an authentic boss, a vulnerable boss, a leader, etc. But we don't want to be ill prepared. So I think Murph, what you're saying is we continually say, I don't know, I don't know. People go, geez, what are you, what are you doing? You know, what do you do in your office all day? George Costanza with the Penske file, you just shut the <laughs> you just shut the office and you, you just sort of sit there. 
So I think, again, preparation, you know, is, is really important part of making sure people don't see you as incompetent as what you're saying, Murph, isn't it? Yeah. What are the other things that we feel like, because again, standards are really important, culture is really important. What are the other tips just to finish off on to get that balance right between being a vulnerable leader, but also a leader that everyone looks at and goes, yeah, because of that, they've got a really good balance. Well, what are some of the things they need to to think about, Mark, in that, in that space? I always come back to um, being able to say, what is my responsibility as a leader? And, and is it my responsibility? And, and, and if you truly ask yourself that question, that's that's a pretty vulnerable question to ask. You know, am I, what is my responsibility? Am I here to be the best teammate or am I here to be the best individual? And that, again, takes a lot of vulnerability to truly say, okay, I'm here for other people, not just here for me. And it comes back to you know, what Murph said before around trust. Am I delivering, am I doing what's best for the team or am I doing what's best for myself? So always think yeah. about that. Yeah, it's a great point, isn't it? Like, what am I actually here to do? Am I here to, I'm here of service rather than for myself. I think the other thing, Murph, is, which is probably a bit more technical, I reckon if we get our job descriptions right and everyone knows exactly what their job title is, where it's a lot easier for it to understand what we're good at and what we're not good at and when we can be vulnerable, when we can share. Do you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. You 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 always maintain role clarity is the single most important thing and I, and I would never ever disagree with that i think that yeah. role clarity is um absolutely vital but uh, ultimately go back to the question you asked mark it's always around self awareness yeah so you <clears throat> if you've got leaders that are self aware they'll they'll work through well oh, should i should i should have known that yeah and yeah. so that that probably wasn't a good thing to admit or yeah. Or no, hang on. That was that was a real that was that was right to ask the group about that. And good, but you and I have worked with people, Ruzi, that um, never ask for help, yeah. and they, they just die in the vine in the end. Because the truth is, um, you know, you can't give them feedback. You can't. They think they know everything. Blah blah blah. And so um, it's just a, it's, it's that fine line. But it comes back to your level of self awareness. And yeah. if if you've got no self awareness. Uh, then you're then you're in trouble because I know uh, Gary Ablett changed Geelong Footy Club in the early days because he he actually said to the boy he was it was straight after a game he was really tired probably he was probably exhausted and he he said to <laughs> he the probably guy, had, he probably had fifty possessions that's why yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well no he, I don't think he had that day because the oh, reason right. he, the reason he said this was he said hey guys I need help. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. because he was he used to get tagged week in week out all the time. Yeah. And so, I he said I need your help. And it actually was it was a really interesting question at the time, and it sort of opened up a, a really good conversation the following Monday. And <clears throat> um, as a result of that, it sort of um, it spread a little bit through the team that it was okay to ask for help, and that we would because as soon as you as soon as he said that, there were some guys that stepped right up, and you know. The mm. guy that tagged him the following week, he he was in a lot of trouble, and so as a result of that, you know, everyone stepped in to help him. So yeah. I think that's uh, it, it's really powerful if you if it's done at the right time. And I think, you know, I, I understand that I'm not the most vulnerable person, so I have to I have to really work hard at that, and yeah. continue to make sure that. As Mark said earlier, I demonstrate empathy. So it's about that self awareness piece and having good people around you as well. Like, you know, I know that Mark or you will tell me, "Hey Murph, you need to pull your head in there and and you need to apologise or, or you know you've been a bit t I've been been a bit harsh." So yeah, I think that's having good people around you and being prepared to listen. I think the Gary Ablett story is fantastic, and for those that don't follow footy, the listening to us, he's he's the best player I've ever seen. So for him to be able to step up and be vulnerable in that moment and say, cause he was getting at one stage ever. Yeah. You know, it was like, just, we got to stop this guy. And I half joked before he would get 50. He, he's the best player I've seen. And that's a really important story. So for your best player to sort of stand up and go, I need help. Not because he was selfish because they needed him to be, you know, that's a lot of good players, but they needed him to be Gary Ablett for them to do what they did. So that's a really good example. And I, and I want to finish off by the last thing you have you have to have someone in your organization that knows you really well that knows who you are 
Like for me, you know, having Johnny Blakey and Ross Lyon, you know, that I played with, they know the authentic Paul Roos. They yeah. could come and tap me on the shoulder and go, mate, hang on. Yeah, that's that's not you or that that's not. I reckon too often we we can't have everyone around us that's going to, yeah, but at least to have one person, Murph, I reckon to your point, that can tap you on the shoulder and can say that wasn't right or even well done, mate, well done today. You were really vulnerable today because it is a fine line. Yeah. It is that balancing act we spoke about. So I reckon that's a good way to finish, guys. So, mate, thanks, Mark. That was awesome. Thanks, Murph. Really good. Um and again, I just think be authentic, be yourself, and hopefully that's some really good tips for everyone. So thanks, Murph. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Rosie. Awesome Shout work. out to uh, Liz, uh, Jared's wife as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to Liz. Yeah. I agree. I'll, I'll make sure she doesn't get a copy of this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And she watches right, it on thanks LinkedIn. Thanks, so everyone. Thanks, Tom. Right, we'll see you all, we'll see you all yeah. next week on the Culture Couch Live. Thank you. Bye.